God's love frees me to be the person I am without having to become more attractive, more intelligent, or more popular. Christ's friendship frees me to take risks, to surprise even myself with courage, sometimes to fall flat on my face, but always to move onward with the knowledge that God is by my side, encouraging me. The Holy Spirit's guidance frees me to put my mistakes behind me because all things can be healed by God's gentle touch. Thank you, try and God. Amen. Let us share God's love and forgiveness by the sign of peace. The peace of Christ be with you.
share our joy. We hear your call to share your story of hope. With open hearts, 
we hear, we, we go to offer your healing stories to others. And with open hands, we go to share our story of your forgiveness and love for others. And now we pray the Lord's Prayer in a new and simple way. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from the evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen.
Clap along if you feel like a room without a roof. Come on, sing with me. Wait, you're not Pharrell. That's a Pharrell song. Yeah, but I had the CD. <laughs> I don't think you understood my question. Have a seat. Okay, the question was, what is your story? What is God doing in your life? Uh, you over there? I'm actually going through a really hard time right now, and I could use a lot of prayer. See, recently my friends and I all split up and went our separate ways. Wow, that's hard. Yeah, it has been. We always had these crazy experiences, and we always met in this little coffee shop called Central Park. I mean, there was me, Joey, Chandler, Monica. Wait, wait. you're talking about the TV show Friends. That's a sitcom. No, that's not true. We would meet every Thursday at 7 o'clock for a half hour. Ne never mind, have a seat. Alright, I don't think I'm making myself clear here. What is God doing in your life? Yes, you again? Alright, I don't think I understood this time, but I get it now. Uh, the other day, God put a huge task in front of me. I mean, this fellowship of believers, and I had to basically save the world. We had this ring, and we had to destroy it in the mountain of war. We had an elf with us, and there were dragons, and I had a really hairy feet at the time. Oh, Alright, you can't talk anymore. That's the Lord of the Rings. <laughs> Please, anyone tell me what God is doing in your life? God has been doing big things in my ministry. I mean, all these crazy things have been happening. Okay, like what? Well, we have these huge revivals where tons of people come to hear about Christ, and just a lot of people get saved, and it's just amazing. What's your ministry called? Oh, it's it's the um, Ashley Graham Crusades. Yeah, that's it. You, you mean the Billy Graham Crusades? That's not you. Have a seat. All right. I don't see why this is so difficult. This is ridiculous. Please, will anyone tell me something God has done in your life? Anyone. Please, anyone at all. Anyone but Mike. Please, please, let there be someone other than Mike. Okay, Mike, go ahead. Yes. Sorry about before. I didn't know what you meant by God is doing in my life. I got it now. Sorry about that. Okay. You're all right. Let's go ahead. Well... I actually just got back from a mission trip in Brazil. Oh, wow. Uh, well, yeah, it was awesome. I mean, God did big, big things there. A lot of people made confessions of faith in Jesus. God moved in mighty, mighty ways. Well, it, it says in my records right here that you've never left the country. Well, yeah, that's right. Brazil, Alabama. Yeah, it was so great in Brazil, Alabama. People were, stop it. But I was used by God to reach these Brazilian Alabamians to... No, you weren't. <laughs> but you can imagine if I did. Please, Sid, all right. Please, for the love of all that is holy, do any of you have a story of your own? A personal testimony of what God has done in your life? <sighs> I don't even care anymore. Sure, what is it? Well, when you said testimony, it sparked a memory of an experience of mine. When I was in seventh grade, I went to church camp, and it was awesome. We got to help and serve a lot of people there. God really did a lot of things that summer. That's exactly what I was looking for. So you went to church camp and you were in seventh grade, and God did awesome things there. That's really cool. So since you've shared a little bit, what else has God done in your life? What do you mean? Well, how old are you now? I'm a senior. Right. God did awesome things back in 7th grade. So what else has God done in your life since then? How old have you grown? Well, I go to church camp every year. Is that all that's happened? You had, you had one awesome experience a few years ago, and you haven't seen God move since then? Um, not really. Maybe I don't understand the question. Okay, you can have a seat. Thanks for sharing. Look, it's so easy for us to get caught up in other people's experiences and experiences from the past. So here's a question. 
What does God want to do with you? If someone asks for your story, what will you tell them? Well, I tell them about the time I healed a man who was unable to walk. I just reached out. Mike, this meeting's over. Go out and create some experiences of your own. Let God actually use you to do something. Our second Bible lesson is from the letter of 1 Peter, chapter 3, verses 8 through verse 18. Listen to God's invitation on how to be a better Christian. Summing up, be agreeable, be sympathetic, be loving, be compassionate, be humble. That goes for all of you. No exceptions. No retaliation. No sharp-tongued sarcasm. Instead, bless. That's your job. To bless. Go be a blessing and also get a blessing. Whoever wants to embrace life and see the day fill up with good, here's what you do. Say nothing evil or hurtful, snub evil and cultivate good. Run after peace for all your worth. God looks on all of this with approval, listening and responding well to what he's asked. But he turns his back on those who do evil things. If with heart and soul you're doing good, do you think you can be stopped? Even if you suffer for it, you're still better off. Don't give the opposition a second thought. Through thick and thin, keep your hearts at attention, in adoration before Christ, your Master. Be ready to speak up and tell anyone who asks why you're living the way you are, and always with the utmost courtesy. Keep a clear conscience before God so that when people throw money,